damn movie, you've got a spelling error in your title and you didn't even notice that? No more he screams and hollers. He lived for five and twenty days and cost me fifty dollars. Ethereal Rhymeration. You take that back, mother my childhood dog Scruffy has this title. Okay, I'm all for establishing a mood, but there are so many panning shots of grave markers in this opening that I think we've covered at least five different cemeteries. Er, cemeteries. Cemeteries? Ah, sudden evil lair from the first season of True Detective. Whoa, not only is this a family buys a creepy house and will definitely be haunted by a cliche, it's also a family in the 80s drives a station wagon with wood paneling cliche. Finally here. Yeah. Acting! What do you think? It's gorgeous. The music, the longing looks, the oversized grins, and overpronounced hugs. This feels more like a Douglas Sirk melodrama than a horror movie. So does this asshole go around blowing his horn everywhere? He can't even see anyone at the house when he leans into that thing. I'm Lewis Creed. Ah hell, Judd's gonna turn out to be Ivan Drago's grandfather, isn't he? In the first eight minutes of this film, four of them have been people talking about or staring at this path. Who gives a path that much goddamn attention? It's almost like these characters know they're in a horror film. This is the first of what are far too many animal-based unnecessary jump scares, and they can f*** right the hell off. Need a glass? Not at all. Good for you. What a weird movie manhood test. Isn't a bottle just a glass that's bottle-shaped? Is Judd going to ask the doc's opinion on whether or not a hot dog is a sandwich next? And seriously, what the hell is up with this road? Maybe these trucks would be traveling this often and this quickly, but why aren't there any normal cars passing through too? It's like there's a fork a mile from here that says, trucks go this way and all other cars continue at a normal speed down the non-horror movie lane. You know that? Path your wife commented on. I'm pretty sure this movie has the word path in it more times than that Hulu show that was actually titled The Path. That road, and those Orenko trucks, the two main reasons is there. Okay, I know what Fred Gwynn is going for with his accent here, but he's mainlining way too hard. Well, where does it lead? Pet Sanitary. Rock it as. Wish I had a doctor around with my stomach pain so bad. <laughs> Guess I'll never be lucky. Hell, I ain't married to anyone. I mean, is she having three different conversations with herself at the same time? Damn it, movie. Not everyone in a horror movie needs to be weird and creepy. It says Pet Cemetery, honey. It's misspelled, but that's what it says. Um, is he waiting for a line prompt? Seriously, do these folks think this suddenly turned into a silent film? <coughs> cat sound, even though the cat is clearly not making a sound. Wait, they live right on the f***ing water? Look how gorgeous that f*** is. And the weather's been super nice, considering the clothes, right? Why are they so obsessed with this goddamn cemetery instead of playing around over there? You promise, Daddy? Don't shilly-shally, Lewis. Shilly-shallying. Jesus Christ, doesn't the kid at least have any lines here? Going to get his nuts cut, yes. If you were playing the nuts cut drinking game, you would be buzzed enough now to possibly enjoy the rest of the film. Still friends, Doc? Is it just me, or has this scene been going on for like six hours? And thus begins the surprisingly disgusting f***ing movie. I know it's based on a Stephen King novel and everything, but he's not always this violent. You didn't see like this in Shawshank. Also, did the entire class come with this kid? I'm sure he was popular and but this is a ridiculous amount of support. Lewis. How did you know my name? Yeah, that's definitely what you should be asking, instead of immediately trying to help this boy that's miraculously still alive. Also, watching this performance makes me think that not having Keanu Reeves play the character in the new version seems like a missed opportunity. No? 80s running shorts, 80s special effects. Come on, Doc. Don't make me tell you twice. What's with the impatience? This asshole disappeared as soon as he beckoned him the first time, and he didn't give Lewis any actual information. Also, Lewis freaked the f*** out when the cat scared him a couple nights ago, but uh, he's just taking this without batting an eyelash? Who said you were dreaming? Man, they really wanted to get their money's worth with a makeup job on massive head wound Harry, huh? This movie is seriously showing almost the entirety of this f***ing walk. The pacing and editing of this thing are the worst parts. And you know I mean that after watching this guy's performance. This is the place where the dead speak. Yes, I know, because Judd told me this earlier. Why do we need a victor when we've got a perfectly alive Judd? Jesus, even waking up in this movie takes forever. Holy sh Dude, even if the kid's dead, you can't destroy his entire medical records file. Are we sure this asshole's a doctor? It's not like he's actually done any doctoring on screen. Despite all the shit that occurred right after they moved in, nothing happened between August and November. Man, this kid's cute. He's really a breath of fresh air in contrast to the dark and dour ambience of the rest of the film. I'm glad he'll be around for a while. Oh, shit, wrong channel. Yep. That church, all right. Did it really take an up-close look and a rudimentary medical exam to confirm this? Like, is it that hard to tell just from looking down? Look, I know it's November in Maine and all, but this dickhead has at least four layers on. It's like he walked into an Eddie Bauer and said, I'll take one of everything. Judd, what's that? Good question. You want to stare about it? The f Did Lewis seriously agree to go rock climbing without any questions about what they were doing? What is this place? This was their burial ground. Holy 
This place is huge. In fact, I would argue too huge for a not that many people know about its site. Maybe we didn't have social media in today's internet in 1989, but we did have planes from which this would have been easily seen. So this is Judd's immediate inclination to the problem of the dead cat. What about the sitcom solution of getting a new one that looks a lot like the old one, which will fool the kid for a little while, but then they'll have the dawning realization that it's not the old one, which will lead to a sit down between parent and child and a comically frank discussion about the transience of life. Them were super popular in the 80s. Not one word about what we done tonight. What did we do tonight, Judd? I'll tell you when would have been an appropriate time to ask this, sometime during the hour that it took to walk back from the f***ing burial ground. Goldman residence. Happy Thanksgiving, guys! Hey, FYI, I found the dead cat and buried it in magic, and everyone's gonna die because of it. Save me a drumstick. Hi, Daddy, I love you. Dude, he can't hear you staring over the goddamn phone. Also, what's the deal with Lewis's weirdness here? Sure, it was an unusual afternoon, but he didn't do anything that would prevent him from talking to his son. <laughs> I know this was 1989, but holy balls, those are some epically shitty dead cat effects. Cat scratch bleeder. Bot came back all right. It was never quite the same dog that I knew. But I still went ahead and had you bury church there, so let's hope for the best. Baths. Yeah, man, don't feel the need to treat that wound caused by your supernaturally alive cat or bandage it or anything, despite the fact that you're, you know, a doctor and Random Micmac burial ground shot is truly random. They're not taking Missy to it, so why was it shown? And that was clearly Lewis with Church in a trash bag and Judd with his digging devices standing there from the previous day. Movie doesn't continuity well. Wow, this is the weirdest Stan Lee cameo I've ever seen. My father used to have a saying, Judd. Just look quietly bemused all the time. It'll make up for the fact that you have a complete lack of acting talent. Also, make sure to work out a bunch. For the love of God, take care of that hair. Reading. I wake up and I think, is Zelda dead yet? Is she? The Zelda storyline seems to be the go-to for most fans of this movie. And to be fair, the makeup work and the way it's shot should be commended. But the fact that it has f all to do with the rest of the movie should be sinned, and so we shall. They'll say you hated her, Rachel, and that was true. It's like Mary Lambert thought the Phoebe Cates bar confession in Gremlins wasn't melodramatic enough and knew she could top it. Doesn't make it any better, but to be fair, she succeeded. I'm going to get you a volume. Wait, you know I don't take... Tonight you do. Of course, Lewis has a casual Valium prescription. It explains a ton about this performance. So when is this? Everyone's out here in summer clothes, so I guess it's been about a year since they moved in, and the children seriously haven't aged a day? Gage is flying <laughs> it! I'm flying it! I'm wondering if it's possible to telegraph a child's death any f***ing harder than what's currently on my screen. Everything spatially about this scene makes no goddamn sense, unless you assume the two-year-old is Quicksilver. No! No. Seriously, no. I want no part of this section of the movie. It's a new and a skip and a big ol' f*** you for good measure. I knew something like this would happen. I told her when you were first married you'll have all the grief you can stand and more, I said. The hell is the problem with Rachel's parents? Sure, Lewis is low on personality, but he's a f***ing doctor, right? It's not like she punched down when looking for a husband. Claude could take it back if he wanted to, couldn't he? You really, really wanted to. Man, the things Ellie says really only make sense if she knows about the magic of the Micmac grounds, but she doesn't, so this provides some convenient but unwarranted reminders to Lewis on how he can handle this. So, is this thing cool now? It was Thanksgiving when he performed the resurrection, and now it's well into the next year. So for all those months, he's been okay enough to sleep in the bed, but now it's getting all creepy and You asked me if anyone had ever buried a person up there in the Micmac grounds. I lied to you when I said no. It's been done. Of course it's been done. I don't understand why Lewis ever believed him. Anyone who knew about that place would immediately be at least thinking about it once they lost a loved one. It had to be stopped. She knew it was an abomination. Poor Fred Gwynn was doing everything in his power to act this movie up to his standards, but I'll be damned if it wasn't the most futile effort I've ever seen. Don't think about doing it, Lewis. The place gets holier, but the place is evil. Then why the hell did Judd take him out there in the first place? I know he was trying to help Ellie cope with Church being dead, but the movie simply cannot make up its mind on this f***ing character. I had a bad dream last night about Daddy and Gage and someone named Pax Cow. I'm not sure why the movie ever introduces the Sixth Sense subplot with Ellie, if it's never going to use it for anything, other than to have her mispronounce Pascal in a cute way. Damn it, Dale fell asleep on the set again in the middle of a scene. Someone take those horse tranquilizers away from him, for God's sake. Great idea, man. If you want to rob a grave, you want to make sure you start that in the middle of the day. I'll just put him back to sleep. There was no way Dale was going to get into an emotional state to cry on command, but luckily for the director, he suffered a massive allergy attack in the middle of this take. Probably went out for a hamburger or a chicken dinner, dear. You know how men are when they're alone. That's why my wife won't leave me alone anymore. She knows I'll just cheat on her with insane amounts of ground beef and poultry. Goodbye. Rachel! 
Hey, remember back in the days when this silly dial tone sounds after the phone is hung up on the other side cliche happened all the time? I guess it's a prerequisite for horror movie characters to be able to dig graves. If you ask me to dig a one-foot hole in my backyard, I'm not sure I could comply. That's right, Doc. You outsmarted them again, solely by ducking into the grave that you just dug. Man, Judd brings Budweiser over to Lewis so frequently, I'm starting to think he's a plant, like Marlin in the Truman Show. Baby corpse, do 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 do. Baby corpse, do 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 do. I never realized until now how the people behind 2016's The Boy must have really loved this five-minute section of Rachel's parents' house and thought, what if there was an evil man boy in the walls? I'm coming for you, Rachel, and this time. I'll get you. Great, can we watch that movie instead? Jesus f***ing Christ, the nearly headless Nick character has now gone from confusing to infuriating. He's got a seat on the f***ing plane now? Also, why is Rachel going back to Maine in such a rush? She has no idea about the resurrection circle, and the only thing that has prompted this reaction was Ellie knowing about the kid that died earlier in the movie. So there's no reason for her to scurry back home. <laughs> what? See? Just imagination. Now let's get back to the very real business of raising your ass from the dead. It's trying to stop you! Do you hear me? It's trying to stop you! So what exactly is the it that's trying to stop Rachel? Micmac Indian spirit? The ghost of her sister? Armus? Hey, why is this movie called Pet Cemetery anyway? Burial ground is like miles from the actual cemetery, and they only bring back one animal in the entire movie. Hey, stop! Rachel is lucky enough to get the one truck driver who's not driving 150 miles an hour in this movie kids. Always leaving the door open. Why is Gage coming over here to mess with Judd? Judd specifically said whomever did the burying essentially becomes the owner. If Judd was over at the Creed's house and got in the way, I can see why Gage would kill him. But to purposely go over to Judd's house to f*** with him doesn't seem to fit with the Micmac undead scheme. Gone with the Gwyn! Thank you so much! So Rachel just abandoned that rental car outside of Boston? She didn't stop to make a phone call to let Budget know or anything? I mean, who's the real villain here? It's the end of the line for me too. I'm not allowed any further. Great! Still not sure how you work or fit into this movie, but safe travels. Judd? Rachel raced the hell back to Maine to, I guess, check on Lewis? So it makes perfect sense that she immediately goes over to Judd's place. I don't care if she heard a noise or not. She was previously absurdly focused on getting home. Are you up there? I don't know, but if this movie holds form, I bet it'll show your entire f***ing journey up those steps. Never get out of bed again! Awesome! Now the demon or ghost or what the f*** can change forms just to f*** with anyone that encounters it. Totally explained earlier in the movie. Lewis, are you there? Yep, just over here staring. You know, normal Tuesday. <laughs> so now the demon learned how to use the f***ing phone? Holy sh! this movie has gone off the f***ing rails. He just shoved the entire syringe into that cat. Be dead! Clearly Dale Mitkiff surprised himself by not acting like he was waking up after a long coma. Look, there's building tension in a horror movie, and then there's the criminally drawn out bull that this movie constantly serves us. Without these long shots of nothingness, this thing would be just under an hour. Lots of seconds of Lewis getting attacked by a discount Chucky doll. No fair, no fair. This is what I've been constantly saying to Chris for putting this movie on the schedule and making me watch it. Movie didn't even try to hide that it's just a doll sitting there. Not even gonna pretend to give the viewer a suspension of disbelief. I'm so sorry, but don't make it worse. Oh hey, it's that guy again. But didn't he clearly say that he wasn't allowed to go any further in this story when Rachel got back? Did he get a reprieve for good behavior? So no one, even with all these trucks passing by, called in the massive house fire. What you own, always comes home to you. Or goes to your neighbor's house and kills him for no reason at all. Phew, thank God that's over. It's not like they'd bring the actual movie back from the dead and resuscitate this. Those woods belong to something else. Oh, sh well, in 20 years, they could become steady viewers. Programming for cats. Uh, uh, to what? What was that word? What word? To what? Did you say utes? Yeah, two utes. What is a ute? Uh, 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 I just came. Wesley, no one wants to become dependent. That happens later. But it does happen. So why do people start? On my home planet, there was so much poverty and violence that for some, the only escape is through drugs. How can a chemical substance provide an escape? It doesn't. But it makes you think it does. Let's put a smile on that face. Who the f is Martha Stewart? Hell, I ain't married anyone. It's good talk. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor. I'm not a vet. Your mother sucks c and hell. Did you just order lobster in a diner? <laughs> yeah, why? Because it's a diner. Let me see what you have. No!
Yeah.